Part I of Eros and Psyche by Robert Bridges. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at AntipodeanWriter.wordpress.com. Eros and Psyche by Robert Bridges. Part I. March. In midmost length of hundred cityed Crete, the land that cradled Zeus of old renown, where grave Demeter nurseried her wheat, and Minos fashioned law, ere he went down to judge the quaking hordes of Hell's domain, there dwelt a king on the Omphalian plain, eastward of Ida, in a little town. Three daughters had this king, of whom my tale time hath preserved, that loveth to despise the wealth which men misdeem of much avail. Their glories for themselves that they devise, for clerkly is he, old hard featured time, and poet's fabled song, and lover's rhyme he storeth on his shelves to please his eyes. These three princesses all were fairest fair, and of the elder twain tis truth to say that if they stood not high above compare, yet in their prime they bore the palm away, outwards of loveliness. But nature's mood, gracious to make, had grudgingly endued, and marred by gifting ill the beauteous clay. And being in honour, they were well content to feed on lovers' looks and courtly smiles, to hang their necks with jewelled ornament and gold that vanity in vain beguiles, and live in gaze and take their praise for due, to be the fairest maidens then to view within the shores of Greece and all her isles what of that youngest one the third princess there is no likeness since she was as far from pictured beauty as is ugliness though on the side where heavenly wonders are ideals out of being and above which music worshippeth but if love love tis as the poet saith to love a star her vision rather drave from passion's heart what earthly soil it had afore possessed since to man's purer unsubstantial part the brightness of her presence was addressed and such as mocked at god when once they saw her heavenly glance were humbled and in awe of things unseen returned to praise the best and so before her wheresoever she went hushing the crowd a thrilling whisper ran and silent heads were reverently bent till from the people the belief began that love's own mother had come down on earth sweet cytherea or of mortal birth a greater goddess was vouchsafed to man then Aphrodite's statue in its place stood without worshippers, if Cretans prayed for beauty or for children, love or grace, the prayer and vow were offered to the maid, unto the maid their hymns of praise were sung, their victims bled for her, for her they hung, garland and golden gift, and none forbade. And thence opinion spread beyond the shores, from isle to isle the wonder flew, it came across the Aegean on a thousand oars, Athens and Smyrna caught the virgin's fame, and east or west, wherever the tale had been, the adoration of the foam-born queen fell to neglect, and men forgot her name. No longer to high Paphos now twas sailed, the fragrant altar by the graces served, at Nidus was forsaken, pilgrims failed, the rocky island to her name reserved, proud Ephyra and Meropus renowned, twas all for Crete, her votaries were bound, and to the Cretan maid her worship swerved. Which when in heaven great Aphrodite saw, who is the breather of the year's bright morn, fount of desire and beauty without flaw, herself the life that doth the world adorn, seeing that without her generative might nothing can spring upon the shores of light, nor any bud of joy or love be born. She, when she saw the insult, did not hide her indignation that a mortal frail with her returned divinity had vied her fair Hellenic empire to assail, for which she had fled the doom of Ninusold, and left her wanton images unsold in Babylon, and Zidon soon to fail. Not long, she cried, shall that poor girl of Crete guard it in my despite, for I will bring such mischief on the sickly counterfeit, as soon shall cure her tribe of worshipping her beauty, will I mock with loathed lust, bow down her dainty spirit to the dust, and leave her long alive to feel the sting. With that she calls to her her comely boy, the limber scion of the god of war, the fruit adulterous, which for man's annoy to that of his partner Cytherea bore, eros the ever young who only grew in mischief and was cupid named anew in westering after time of latin law 
when the first dawn of manhood is the hour when beauty from its fleshly bud unpent flaunts like the coral of a summer flower as if all life were for that ornament such eros seemed in years a trifler gay the prodigal of an immortal day for ever spending and yet never spent his skin is brilliant with the nimble flood of ichor that comes dancing from his heart lively as fire and redder than the blood and maketh in his eyes small flashes dart and curleth his hair golden and distilleth honey on his tongue and all his body filleth with wanton lightsomeness in every part naked he goeth but with sprightly wings red iridescent are his shoulders fledged a bow his weapon which he deftly strings and little arrows barbed and keenly edged and these he shooteth true but else the youth for all his seeming reeketh nought of truth but most deceiveth where he most is pledged tis he that maketh in men's heart a strife between remorseful reason and desire till with life lost they lose the love of life and by their own hands wretchedly expire or slain in bloody rivalries they miss even the short embracement of their bliss his smile of fury and his kiss of fire he makes the strong man weak the weak man wild ruins great business and purpose high brings down the wise to folly reconciled and martial captains on their knees to sigh he changeth dynasties and on the head of duteous heroes who for honour bled smircheth the laurel that can never die him then she called and gravely kissing told the great dishonour to her godhead done and how if he from that in heaven would hold on earth he must maintain it as her son the rather that his weapons were most fit as was his skill ordained to champion it and flattering thus his ready zeal she won whereon she quickly led him down on earth and showed him psyche thus the maid was named whom when she showed but could not hide her worth she grew with envy tenfold more inflamed but if she cried thou smite her as i bid soon shall our glory of this affront be rid and she and all her likes for ever shamed make her to love the loathliest basest wretch deformed in body and of moonstruck mind a hideous brute and vicious born to fetch anger from dogs and cursing from the blind and let her passion for the monster be as shameless and detestable as he is most extreme and vile of human kind which said when he agreed she spake no more but left him to his task and took her way beside the ripples of the shell-strewn shore the southward stretching margin of a bay whose sandy curves she passed and taking stand upon its taper horn of furthest land looked left and right to rise and set of day fair was the sight for now though full an hour the sun had sunk she saw the evening light in shifting colour to the zenith tower and grow more gorgeous ever and more bright bathed in the warm and comfortable glow the fair delighted queen forgot her woe and watched the unwonted pageant of the night broad and low down where late the sun had been a wealth of orange gold was thickly shed fading above into a field of green like apples ere they ripen into red then to the height of variable hue of rose and pink and crimson freaked with blue and olive bordered clouds over lilac led high in the opposed west the wandering moon or silvery green in flying green was fleeced and round the blazing south the splendour soon caught all the heaven and ran to north and east and aphrodite knew the thing was wrought by cunning of poseidon and she thought she would go see with whom he kept his feast swift to her wish came swimming on the waves his lovely ocean nymphs her guides to be the nereids all who live among the caves and valleys of the deep Simodosi, agave blue-eyed halia and nerissa spiro and thoe close and actia yara melite and amphinome apsudes and nemeretes calianassa simathoe thalia limnoria clemone ianira and ianassa doris and panope and galatea dynamene dexamene and myra ferusa doto proto calianira amphithoe orithuia and amathea and after them said melicertes drave his chariot that with swift unfellied wheel by his two dolphins drawn along the wave flew as they plunged yet did not dip nor reel but like a plough that shears the heavy land stood on the flood and back on to either hand overturned the briny furrow with its keel 
behind came tritons that their conches blew green bearded tailed like fish all sleek and stark and hippocampi tamed a bristly crew the browsers of old proteus's weedy park whose chief a merman brought a shell for boat and balancing its hollow fan afloat pushed it to shore and bade the queen embark and then the goddess stepped upon the shell which took her weight and others threw a train of soft silk over her that unfurled to swell in sails at breath of flying zephyrs twain and all her way with foam in laughter strewn with stir of music and of conches blown was aphrodite launched upon the main end of part one recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com